Hey everyone, this is Itlali from Nicantalaka Women Warriors, Nicantalaka University, and today I have a very special guest. His name is Kuitlawak, and he is a Nawa teacher, and I want him to share more of the experience, the vision, and what are the resources he has for our people, and how to do colonize through language. So, first and foremost, Lasa Gamati for being here and sharing space with me. And I want to go back to what inspired you? What did, what got this all started, right? You have um, speaknawa.com, you have the Nawa courses that you teach at different community colleges, even preschool students. So can you tell us, take us back a few years ago, how it all began? Uh, where it all began is teaching Nawa. It all began uh, three years ago. I saw an event on Facebook, free Nawa class. Um, and I went, it was at a park, Marsh Park uh, in LA, and about 60 people came, and you know, we're all in this decolonizing journey, going back to our roots, and so that, that's what started, it started it all, it started it all, like it's time for us to, there's, there's spaces to learn Spanish, English, French, there's always funding for that. But indigenous languages do not have the same weight in academia. So um, teaching the community has been very fulfilling. It has been, really, been beyond fulfilling. Beyond fulfilling. It's, uh, on a daily, on a weekly basis, teaching the people basis online you know online um, if you want to sign up you can go to speaknawat.com you can go to our Instagram speak now what you can click the link in the bio you can sign up online if you're far away um, we also teach at Pasadena City College we're teaching uh Komati Sitlali you're a part of that you open the door for that uh Komati Professor Toscano Chicago Studies program for um, being able to, you know, graciously offer me this opportunity. Uh, and thankfully, I'm very thankful for that. Um, so yeah, every Friday, Pasadena City College. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've never studied Nahuatl before. You can come in. Do you have to be a student from Pasadena City College, or can you be a community member? Uh, so it's open to students in the community. So. And can you tell us a little bit about what um, what type of courses do you do now, like on a weekly basis, where people can go if they're interested? And what does it look like? Say I go to your class for the first time, what can I expect? What is it that I should be prepared for? Um, what are the teaching approaches that you that you all do in that um, that space? Can you kind of kind of take us through that through that journey? Yeah, um, and also we're also at every Sunday. So at Pasadena City College, every Friday at 1.30 p.m. by the community garden, uh, by, the, by the L building, at the community garden, by the L building, at 1.30 p.m. We're at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes at 12 p.m. every single Sunday. Um, again, all the information, if you go to speaknow.com or if you go to Speak Now on Instagram, I post all the classes, all the flyers there. Um, and to answer your question, this is what it looks like. So um, we take a, an approach to, we use different techniques. We do total body response. So when I say nitlakwa, 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 so you just repeat it. Nitlakwa, I mean, nitlakwa, nitlakwa. It's also, um, it, it's in a circle. So if you think about it, um, anywhere around the world, your indigenous ancestors sat down in a circle. So that's the approach, circular way of learning and centers of learning around the student. And it's oral, so it's oral and um, repetition, repetition. Um, so we're used to sitting down, writing, and then there's a teacher in front. But in here, we're all the same. We're all in a circle. We're all learning. You know, I'm a teacher. I'm a vessel of this knowledge. So we sit down and we start. Piali. So we say piali. Yeah. The next person says piali. Next person says piali, 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 piali. 
and then we agree. Me meets la palos. Me meets la palos. Me meets la palos. Me meets la palos. So every person says it to the next person, and then to the next person, and then to the next person. Um, we also have techniques where we, you know, we present some items. We do emotionally. Emotionally, we set it down on the table. Emotionally, clicoli, pen. Emotionally, book. And it's all in Nahuatl. So yeah, you can teach any language as well. So emotionally, clicoli. Emotionally, clicoli. It's about four items that we do, and just repetition. Emotionally, clicoli. Emotionally, clicoli. And then you know we start asking questions from them. Tleninon. Tleninon. Clan Inon. What is this? Clan Inon. So every single person asks the next person. And that's how we build conversation. The main goal of our, of our Nawa Study Collective is to be able to speak to each other in Nawa. And to be able to speak to native speakers. There's over a million native speakers in Mexico of Nawa. So it's important to, put, to be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And do you have to have prior knowledge of Nahuatl? Is there like an intermediate course? How do you distinguish your the people that are coming in, like where they're at in the Nahuatl? Is there, do they progress and go on to yes. more difficult? How does that work? Yeah, so you come in, it's the first time we have teachers for first timers. Um, and then there are students that come back. So with that group, we keep going, we, we keep building them up. and. You know, if you keep coming, it's also, it's also, I, I, ask, I get asked this question all the time. Is it hard to learn now what? And it's like, well, it's, is it hard to learn any language? It's up to you. It's really up to you. You can come to our classes and have instruction, but it's also up to you to study on your own. Okay? So, you come in, if you've never studied now before, it doesn't matter. If you studied Nawa before, it doesn't matter. All levels are wrong. Um, you can move up if you keep coming consistently to class every single Sunday. Every single Sunday, and uh, we send you guys, uh, I, we collect email people's email addresses. Um, we don't collect email addresses before. Um, however, we do collect them when you come to class, and when you're here, and you can sign up, and we can send you the material that we just taught you. We send you material every single week. Okay, that's with commitment and coming to class and attending and being part of the class. Um, so yeah, it's all levels welcome. And this place that is at every Sunday, just so that if people don't know, it's um, what's considered Olvera Street, so maybe more familiar with people. Because I know when I first heard about it, I thought it was Plaza de la Raza, because I didn't know there was a Plaza of Artes. So just so people know, this is by that same locale that's called Alvera Street. It's the museum that's across the street from the main, the main Tianguis. And so, yes, yeah, so, and the time is from, it's Sundays from what time to what time? From, it's Sundays, every single Sunday, La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Beginners is 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. And then intermediate is 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. Also, so just to stress it, the level that you are on is basically up to you. If you feel comfortable to move on to intermediate, you can stay for their class for 2.30 or 4.30. Wow. Now, you, did, you do work at um, community colleges and even with preschoolers. So can you kind of tell us, what does it look like? If, if I'm a preschool teacher and I have a, a center, I don't know, Norwalk, Cerritos, and I would like you to come and teach now, what, what do I have to do? What is that process like on my end? Um, just DM me, direct message me, send me an email at speaknawat at gmail.com. And let me tell you a little journey about how I've been able to teach across generations. So I believe, you know, it all started when we were able to teach us at San Bernardino Valley College last year. It was a workshop, one day workshop. Over a hundred students showed up. It was wow. an amazing experience. You know, the, the, the interest is there. 
a desire to learn these languages is there. Um, um, so from there, you know, we started teaching at uh, Chica Space, Community Space in San Bernardino. We were at Eastside Cafe. So we started out at a park, then we moved on to Eastside Cafe, then we were at a friend's house, then um, we are here at La Plaza de Cultureyatus. Um, so, why did you get forgot the main no, question? No, 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 no. <laughs> As an educator, say I want to. I want to oh, have yeah, you yeah, yeah. come to my class. What does it look like? Is it like every day? Is it once a week? Once a week. Okay. So we do sets of six classes. Okay. So even with my online students, it's a six week that you are able to learn for six weeks. Second. And you do that with all, all um, grade levels. So give all grade school, levels. It yeah. Be college, community yeah. college. Yeah, okay. all levels. Basically, I've taught. I've worked with. We, we worked for the Sarino Grand College, the community spaces Chica, Eastside Cafe, La Plaza de um, I've worked with uh, Charter School in Gardena for low-income uh, kids, where they focus on social justice. Um, it was a, a diversity fair, so I had a table. And um, the way that they contacted me is basically messaging me on Instagram. Okay. So all of our work, you can see on Instagram. All the videos, all the pictures that I take every single day. Every single week. Um, we're also on Facebook. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram. We're the website, now at speaknowon.com and all those links, if you go to um, Speak Now on Instagram, click the link in our bio and we'll, we'll have all the links to that. And you can com communicate to me via DM, speaknowon.gmail.com, um, via Facebook, Twitter, we're also on Twitter. So all the links to that are is, are in that link. And we can also put them underneath this video. Um, yes. And for those of you who are not in Los Angeles, perhaps, maybe not in California, they do offer personal online one-on-one uh, -on -one courses. So this can help anyone all over the world if you want to learn Nahuatl. That's a service that y'all provide as well, right? One-on-one -on -one yes. online courses. And how does that look? I just DM and request it. What's the... This, this actually started like April of last year when I stopped working on my job of uh, 10 years and I dedicated myself to this and I was like, there was, every time we would post our flyers, a lot of people would be like, I wish we had this in Houston, I wish we had this in New York, I wish we had this in Washington State. And I'm like, well, let's use all the tools we have available. We have Google Hangouts, we have Skype. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically like FaceTime, but on the computer. Also on your phone, but it's best that we do it on the computer. So it's best that we wear on a computer laptop and you know it's it's you know first it's your introduction, what's your name, where are you from, building rapport with the student, finding out their background and why they want to learn now what and you know and it's just like boom. These are one hour, right? One Six hour. sessions of one hour. One hour online. Uh -huh, online. A la plaza and PCC, uh, it's two hours. Awesome. Two hours. And I have to ask the golden question. And I'm sure you get this all the time, right? Why now what? Yeah. Why now what? Why? There's all these indigenous languages, like y'all being now what centric. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you respond to that? Um. I mean, it's one of the most spoken languages in Mexico. It was used as a lingua franca of Mesoamerica. Um, so that's why you have all these toponyms, all these place names that are Nahuatl, in Nahuatl. So you have Jalisco, Xalisco, sand surface. You have Michoacán, Michoacán, place that has fish. And what does lingua franca know for people that have never heard of that? Before? Lingua franca is it means it was it was used as a like, common language that all tribes communicated with, trade, politics, exchanging information. 
so you have you have a lot of tribes that were bilingual. So I mean, it's one language to start with is Nahuatl because it's, it's everywhere. It's also embedded into our, you know, colonized Mexican Spanish. Yeah. Aguacat, aguacate. Tomat, tomate. You know. Absolutely, and where and as far as as Nahuatl as a tool for decolonization, where do you find the connection, or how do you connect language with decolonization? How do you view language in that? Language is identity. Language is identity. So if we continue to to you know learn and teach European languages, English, Spanish, French, German, we will continue to learn and think like the oppressors. So a language its own worldview. So even when you know, like with me, English and Spanish, you know, when you're talking, you know, for uh, you bilinguals out there, and I'm a bilingual as well. You know, when you, you're talking and you end up talking in the other language, um, because it's different worldviews. So if you want, if you are on this decolonizing journey and you leave out language, then you're leaving out the identity of your people. So, with learning an indigenous language of these lands, you see the world from your, from the ancestors back then. It could be any other language as well. If you're, you could also learn whatever channel, you can learn any other language, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to learn one language. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to learn to learn one language because we have a lot of people as well. Who, you know, I wish you they had Puebecha. I wish they had. I don't know, it takes a lot of work to learn one language alone. Okay. So we, we're starting with Nahuatl. You know, there's other people in my in our collective. It's about 20, 12 of us. Two of us know Cachiquel. Cachiquel is a Mayan language in Guatemala. So perhaps we can continue with that language after now. You know, it'll take a couple of years. Um, in language, you know, to keep it alive, it has to be vibrant, meaning every single generation is speaking it, from preschoolers to mm -hmm. elders. And the work, all these, uh, you know, the opportunities that, that we've been given to teach preschoolers to teach second graders, to teach middle schoolers, um, to teach at college levels is our work. Our work is out there. It's on Tlaxo Tapasoli Facebook group. It's on Nawa Mokmosla page. It's on Speak Nahuatl. It's in our hashtag Tlaxo Tapasoli. It's on, it's in speaknawa.com. You know, we're out there. It's just, if you're willing to commit, invest, and learn this language of these lands, then it's there for you. Awesome. It's there for you. And I know that um, it's important for people to know that there's different variations of Nahuatl. So the one that the courses that you teach offer is Huasteca Nahuatl. Yeah. And can you explain why that, per, um, that Nahuatl instead of others, why the Huasteca Nahuatl? Well, First reason is that's the one that my teacher knows. Yeah. So my teacher has been learning and teaching for about 10 years now. He knows other indigenous languages. And this is our book. So also if you, uh, let me see if you can see it. It's backwards, but this is our beginner's book. So if you've never studied Nahuatl before, you can get this book, Learn Nahuatl, Language of the Aztecs and Modern Nahuas. So, Yipayan Garcia, that's our teacher. So, this is another way um, that I recommend my students to get this book. Because this will, this, this will help you study on your own. And in every class that we have, every single class at the beginning of the class, I ask my students, what did you learn last time? You know, I hold them accountable as well, you know? As far as the future, you talked about the beginning of 
speaknowwhat.com, the Now What courses, the experiences, the development, what is the future you know, vision for your collective? How, how, are the, how do you hope to shape things, shift things, change our people's community by Now What? Well, one way is to keep this language alive. And the future is to keep it alive. And to keep not just this one, but other languages as well. To incorporate other languages into this, into our uh, collective. Tlajmuta basoli means language next. We want to incorporate other languages. But it just takes time to learn one. It takes time. Mm -hmm. and the future also having our own learning center. You know? And also with the, you know, with teaching, you know, your learning, so we want our students to also teach. Absolutely. Beautiful. Anything else you would like to tell people watching this? Any so you know how to contact Speak Now What. The links will be down here. Uh, there's online courses, personalized, you know, one on one courses. Uh, they are also available to teach in six sessions at preschool level all the way through college and yeah contact speaknowwhat.com anything else you want them to know to encourage them let's learn let's learn the indigenous language of these lands let's let's see the world from our ancestors point of view if you have roots in Mesoamerica it's most likely that your ancestors also spoke Nahuatl because it, it was a common language so let's think like our ancestors. Awesome. And information will be there for everyone that's interested. Pialasagamati. Pialasagamati. Piali. Piali.